okay so today is your day one of your demo okay day one demo and what this day one demo will consist is it will be consisting of your some aid aid some aws services okay and that aws service is nothing but your s3 then we'll be spinning up a small ec2 instance we'll be writing the code on eclipse okay and then we'll be writing the data back to my s3 okay so here i'm trying to show you one of my project scenario okay so in our project okay so i'm working for a banking project so in that we were getting some data anomalies what is that data anomalies i'll show you okay so how to handle that data so this is one of my project scenario which i am trying to demonstrate over here okay so that is like handling fixed with data okay so this is what we are trying to see over here okay and let me pause for some couple of minutes let's move ahead okay so this is what we are trying to see today over here in this demo what we would be seeing is we'll be seeing these components okay so i have already opened each component not explicitly but i have just logged into my aws i have not spent up anything so we'll try to spin up in front everything this is my eclipse which is like a brand new so we'll start the coding right from the word go okay so we'll do all those things and uh, we need to handle so this is my access key secret key which i have just made ready so we will be dealing this in two ways okay as i have just given in the chat okay so i'll be handling the above scenarios in two ways okay so what will be those two ways the first is nothing but your rdds which is nothing but your resilient distributed data set and the second is nothing but in a data frame we'll try to see both the things at two level okay how we, how can we handle that okay so let's start with the implementation of this how can we do it's it's simple the only thing is just we need to play here and there nothing else cool so first of all what i will try to do is uh, this is aws s3 service okay which is nothing but your simple storage service now i have some files over here which is on my local file system if you see uh, let me open this fixed with file this is these are the files which i would be playing with okay so if you see this these are the files which i will be playing with okay so that is on my local system what i need to do is i need to push that into my s3 bucket i can do that in many ways okay so the first is what i can do is i can go to my aws i can open my s3 console okay and i, I can quickly make a bucket over here and i can do that okay the second approach is i can use my aws lambda okay i can write a boto3 python script so that it will pick up and it will load it the third is nothing but your cloud formation infrastructure service i can write some script and do that way okay and the fourth is nothing but a simple thing mostly we try to do that in so that's what we are following in projects so i'm using that way spinning up the uh, instances which are available either it could be emr or ec2 then moving the data from local to my ec2 as of now in this scenario with the help of venscp and then once it's into the arena of my aws then some small aws commands and push it from here and there i can do that anyways anything is fine but there are multiple ways okay so let's start doing small small things so first what i would do is i will just spin up a small ec2 instance okay so let's open this ec2 instance and let me spin up this quickly <clears throat> so let's select this a normal one which is a free tier service i am installing only one let's use the same default configuration okay so this is the name the key tag which i am trying to give is so let's say this is demo ec2 machine okay that's it so let's make a move then this is the security group again this is of ec2 machine which is again belongs to my demo okay and i need to access my ssh that's fine so few things for reviewing that's a that's not an issue i already have my key value pair okay i will be using that but don't worry about this how to create a new key pair new key pair and it gives us the pem file and from pem file it create we need to create a dot ppk file it's very easy but let's i already have so let's go ahead with what i have okay so no issues in that so this will spin up my ec2 instance okay it's plain and simple it's no rocket science 
so till the time it is getting spinned up okay so what we can do is okay so i will just try or let's wait for some time let's do step by step okay so the first step is what we are trying to do is is trying to spin up the ec2 instance okay so let's pause for some time i hope that should be available in the meanwhile so this is the ec2 instance which we have spinned up you will get all the information like if you go what is the security groups which we are using okay and why this security group is needed what is the storage which we have added okay as of now we have not added any extra storage okay what is the status check what is the monitoring as of now there is no monitoring because i have not created any logs okay what are the key value pairs so all these details which can be seen in this view it's very easy okay now this is getting spinned up so initialization is done let's see if we are able to connect with that ideally we need to wait for that health checks to be completed but uh, sometimes it allows us okay there are a couple of ways to connect to your ec2 instance okay either you can connect through the public ip address that is the first thing second thing is you can connect with your dns name as well okay both are fine okay so i would generally follow like i can take ip address or you can take anything both looks good to you let's take putty okay and here what you need to do is you need to provide that ppk file okay so i have already assigned that ppk file which is already available it's just a small piece nothing else i'm trying to do let me paste the ip address and let's try to open it okay and let's say yes let me enhance the font screen so that it's visible to everyone in a good manner cool okay so this is your machine which we have just spinned up okay so the username is nothing but your easy to user simple and straight okay nothing else now what we need to do is we just need to i i generally follow this process it's up to you if you want to follow or don't follow i generally what i do is i just try to update whatever the packages are there in this ec2 instance from the global repository okay how you do that we just make use of sudo which is nothing but your super user okay yum install update and hyphen y so in between it asks for a user so i'm just trying to eradicate that process it says there's no package update available it seems to be my machine is updated cool that is done now what we have done we have just spinned up the ec2 instance okay we have just spinned up what ec2 instance is ready for us now what i will try to do i will try to use this ec2 instance and try to create a bucket in the s3 and try to push the files from my local to my s3 this is what we are trying to do in the second phase okay so if i just do you your aws s3 and ls okay if you see it is telling some small thing unable to locate your credentials okay that's fine that's not an issue the reason for it is because we just need to configure our aws so let's do that and it will ask for some access key and secret key which i already have with me okay you will get this whenever you create a new user okay it's nothing big challenge okay so default region name i belong to a region called mumbai which is close to me okay so i'm just trying to mention that region name and the default as a text done nothing else okay so i think some people are waiting let me just stop. okay so sorry for that actually i was in between like creating an instance i was not able to see the people who are available so i have granted the access to everyone and i hope everyone is in okay so for the people who have just joined okay so what i have done is so we are just going with ahead with a small demo of day one okay so i'm hand i'm trying to showcase one of my project scenario like handling fixed with data programmatically using spark scala okay i'll show that in two ways for that purpose i have created two separate files fixed with one and fixed both have separate data so the first step what i have done is so these are the steps which needs to be done again someone is okay 
so what I am trying to do is I'm just I've just pinned up my EC2 instance and we have just connected to this EC2 instance we have done nothing else okay no worries uh, I would be sharing this recording in the group you can go through the first 10 minutes whoever has missed that okay so the EC2 is pinned now what I want to do is I just need this is troublesome Okay, so I have spinned up my EC2 instance. What I need to do is I need to move my files which are available on my local file system. Okay, where I need to move? If you see, there are no files available over here. Okay, so I need to move these files over here. That is what I need to do. Okay, the files are available in my local file system. I need to push that into one of my EC2 instance home path. From that EC2 instance home path, I will move the file or I will copy that file to my bucket area okay which is nothing but my s3 okay so let's open that service so that is nothing but your s3 okay cool let's go to that service so if you see there are a couple of buckets okay so this was like last time which i gave a demonstration so that's the bucket no issues in that let's do the, those things so what i need to do i need to bring the file over here so how can how i can do that we all know we generally do this in when we are working so we make use of like WinSCP okay so I'm just trying to make use of WinSCP simple let me use that okay and this will ask me for some credentials okay it's just nothing but your username password like how we do in general cases now what where I'm trying to connect I'm trying to connect my EC2 instance so I'm just copying that okay so let's take that paste it over here okay here you need to provide the authentication file nothing else that is the ppk file okay so let me take that authentication file and let's provide that okay cool we are done the user is nothing but the user is ec2 user he is the user who would be logged in okay cool so we are at slash home slash ec2 user if you see this we are at the same path now what i need to do like generally we do drag and drop just copy these two files and push this over here it's plain and simple once i come over here and then execute that those two files should be available okay if you want to see the data of any one of the file so you can see the data of fixed with and fixed to this is the data set which is available okay and i need to handle this data set okay so this is one of the project scenario where we were getting the files with a tab delimited and some like fixed delimited so how we handle that i'm just trying to demonstrate that okay so what i have done i have created the ec2 instance okay so i have pushed second thing is not nothing but you are pushing your files from local to ec2 instance with the help of winscp okay so that is what i have done over here okay now the third thing is what we need to do is we need to copy these files from your ec2 instance okay or ec2 home path you can say huh? and upload to your s3 bucket this is what we are trying to do over here okay let's try to do that so now to do that what we need to do is first we need to create a bucket okay so creating a bucket either as i told you in the beginning it's a very easy step either you can say create a bucket graphically or like how we do generally in the projects in the cli based we'll follow that process so it's nothing but aws s3 sorry we are creating a bucket so hence we need to write mb which is which stands for make bucket okay there are a lot means not a lot of commands but few command like 11 to 12 commands which comes so we need to play with that now i need to be, make a bucket at this there are two things which you need to remember in aws the first thing is s3 and the second is iam these two services are global in nature if you see i will always get global over here but if you go to other instances uh, instances or the services of your aws you need to choose a specific region where you need to initiate or need to create that service if you see i'm here in mumbai region just a small we might be knowing but let's, let's create a bucket at this place okay so so what the command is is s3 
nothing else and uh, let's try to give a bucket name called demo and uh, let's say fix with something like a uh, unique because this is global in nature so it could be a scenario someone might have used this so fixed with something like this i'll try to give okay okay so let's try to hit this let's see whether we are able to do that or not cool we are able to do that it means that this name is not available globally so i'm able to use that okay if i'm able to use that so i can just do aws s3 okay ls okay and let's do are we able to see that bucket or not yes we are able to see that bucket which we just created so what i need to do is i just need to take from my present working directory what are the files available and i need to place in this path if you go over here to my s3 console and let's refresh this i should be able to see my bucket and if you go within that we should not be able to see anything as of now because there is no nothing i can upload it or i can simply uh, make a push or copy from here anything is fine let's do that so what i'm trying to do is aws s3 copy the file so let me copy the first file okay where i am copying i'm copying to my some bucket name let's give that bucket name okay let's see whether this is able to do it. so it is telling me upload is done okay let's verify that whether we are able to see that yes we are able to see that first file cool let's press up arrow and let's change the name i i would have used my reg regex x also fixed with asterisk and i would have copied but let's go step by step not an issue so let's refresh this cool both the files are available done so this step is done i am done with the first three steps now let's do with the fourth step the fourth step is nothing but reading your files from aws s3 okay into eclipse and start coding okay this is what we are trying to achieve over here okay so if you see this eclipse i have already created a project just to save a little bit of time okay in the interest of time so i've just uh, saved some time by creating a project okay cool so what we can do is let's create an object <coughs> okay and what object name we can give is it's simple it's nothing but we'll try to give we are reading the data from s3 that is nothing but any naming convention you can follow there is no naming convention as of now here so read uh, s3 and let's say we are trying to read fixed width okay something like which we can understand by looking at the name okay so i'm trying to do something cool let's try to do that okay so here i need to create my main okay so it's building the workspace so let the workspace get built first and we need to see in this couple of formats like rds and data frame both the format we'll try to see how it can be implemented let's see args of array of string okay okay now what year i will be doing is first i will be initiating a session okay Uh, initiating an entry point. so there are entry points with spark 1.x we had spark context and with the evolution or the maturity of spark the spark 2.x came into picture which is nothing but which gives us more features with the name or uh, spark session okay so we can make use of both the things so we'll try to do that so don't let's let's not go into that detail why we are writing let's understand how the code is being written and let's understand how we can achieve the scenario okay cool so what i am trying to do is i am trying to write i am trying to create an entry point for this spark application so that's what i am trying to do just make it uh, just just understand that that's it okay so let's say a new spark conf object which i am trying to create over here and we need to give certain naming uh, certain uh, parameters etc etc okay so now before moving into that it is throwing an error okay so it is telling that not found type spark sorry spark conf so this is complaining because we have not imported that object and it does not understand because all the objects or the apis or the methods which are there are available inside that so it needs to understand that for that we need to import an object uh, import a class so org dot apache dot spark let's import spark conf 
okay so that error should go and it should throw an error of method overloading so that's fine or some arguments missing that is okay okay so we can take and that that's not an issue now let's come back so now if you just press dot now it is throwing suggestions whatever the things are available within this conform chip okay so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to set some app name to this which is nothing but the application so this is nothing but uh, handling fixed with data okay so i'm trying to handle fixed with data over here okay that is what i'm trying to do over here let's set some master okay so set master as of now i am trying to implement this on my local machine okay hence i am trying to use my local resources okay but in projects you would be using a yarn okay and in that again it you will have two things one is nothing but your uh client mode and the other is nothing but your cluster mode okay so we'll see that at later stage if time permits so here i'm just trying to initialize that so initialization is done basic initialization i am not trying to do much of the thing so let's do because it's just a uh, good to know in this session and here i am trying to create a spark context and object and pass the configurations which are available over here okay so whatever the configurations which are available i am passing that and creating a spark context object again it is throwing an error not found type spark uh, context so we just need to go to this package and we just need to import spark context okay so that sh error should go okay so if this now the error is gone so basic initialization i am doing so nothing else so basic initialization what we have done just creation of conf let me introduce let me add the spark session as well because i would be playing with data frame also because the same scenario i would be showing like in two ways like in rdds and data frames so that's what we are trying to do and we are at the fourth step so we are just trying to code so we are just completed three steps whoever has joined later okay so here i'm just trying to create a spark initialization okay so let's say spark <coughs> spark session dot again it will complain me because again the same issue we have not imported that so let's import that okay so import org dot apache dot spark dot sql and within sql you will be having this okay so all the packages don't worry why i am able to remember once you start writing the code and you get errors slowly slowly you will understand why we need this why we need that so it's all on the basis of once you start doing things okay so that's how you come to know okay that's how i am knowing that nothing else okay so i'm just passing the config which i have created so let me pass that conf over here okay so that it is available and let's say get or create i think i'm making some mistake yes i'm making some mistake the reason mistake is this that's why i'm not i was not able to get that and it seems to be spark session okay got it so i just need to write let me just remove this and let's see so here i needed to have why this is not coming spark session spark session dot builder yeah now i'm trying to get other i don't know what was the issue so that's not and i've already copy means i've just removed that we have written earlier and here i just need to say get or create that's it so all the initialization is done just making an entry point for my program to be ready to write the code and here i'm just trying to this is needed for when i would be converting my rdds to data frame this is needed for that and the last thing is nothing but just to set my log level so that unnecessary warnings or errors i will not be able to see cool this is the basic initialization which i have done now let's try to do something now what i need to do is i need to read the files which are available in my bucket okay so that is available in my s3 bucket okay so people who were available right from the beginning so this is the bucket which we created okay via a cli okay so with the help of cli we created this bucket we tried to list what are the availables initially we didn't so after creating this bucket we had this bucket then the files 
these two files what I did I pushed from my local file system with the help of WinSCP which was available in my home path and then I just copied to my S3 bucket it's nothing else what I have done now what I would be doing is I want to read this file which which are there's nothing but fixed with one and fixed with two from my AWS to read that to read this file in my spar okay I need to have certain configurations like access key and secret key which needs to be added in this program so that I can communicate with my AWS objects or AWS services so that's what I'm trying to do over here okay so nothing else what I'm trying to do so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to write a simple thing spark dot spark context and the Hadoop configuration and I need to set certain properties in the form of key and value so that is nothing but the S3A again in S3A we have three different versions the first one is S3 which is nothing but the first edition the second is S3N which is nothing but the native and the S3A which is the latest one the two previous one will be deprecated so hence I am using the newer version of S3A which is the third edition I guess okay so here I am just trying to access the file system of my S3 okay so what I need to access I need to access my access key okay and I need to provide that value over here I will provide that no issues let me copy this sorry let me copy this paste it paste it just copy paste here and there and what you can do is you can set some uh, variable to this and you can use that variable also it's way of coding how you do okay cool now I need to provide my secret key access key secret key is done and the last is nothing but your endpoint we need to provide that okay so let's give the endpoint FS for the S3 file system I need to provide the endpoint okay I already have the access key and the secret key ready with me so that it would not be a waste of time cool and here I just need to provide the end point okay so what is the end point it's nothing but your Amazon endpoint okay so let's give MS -A -M -A -Z -A -M -A -Z -N, Amazon AWS dot com okay so these are the basic configurations we are done with it cool now once we are done with this now the actual programming or the actual program will start from here okay let's start first let's try to see am I able to read the file or not are we able to do that or not let's test that okay so let me test that in a try catch block okay and let me just write a catch block okay this is just nothing but your error handling which I am trying to handle okay if in case any error pops up okay we need to handle that okay so we'll, we'll try to do that and we'll try or oh, before that before moving into try catch box let's me just write a simple variable and let me see am I able to read that uh, file or not okay let's do that first so let's say I'm just seeing like result RDD okay equals to so the, in this result RDD okay what I am trying to do is I'm trying to access my file which is available at a certain location in my AWS S3 bucket what is that bucket so that is nothing but S3A as I told you the new version okay so what is my bucket name my bucket name is nothing but I could have copied this as well from you but let's now so S3 so let's paste that and what is the file name let's pick the first file okay I could have copied here also so let's not let's say the one one by so this is my file okay so if you just hover over it it is giving me an RDD of string okay copy this and let's paste this and let's just try to iterate over it are we able to see the data if we are able to see the data then hopefully all the configurations which we have entered are correct and the code sorry the logic will write and achieve things first let's test let's do a sanity test whether the all the connections or the whatever the configurations which we have assigned are we able to do that or not let's test that <coughs> 
okay so it is giving an error so that's not an issue so what it is telling is input path does not exist okay so there is some issue in the path which we have assigned okay so that it is telling that file save shake okay so that is not a good let's verify the path which i have given so that's there's an issue in my command or the path so it should have been s3 a colon okay double forward slash now it looks good to me let's execute this errors are very important because until unless you don't get errors your learning curve will not grow okay so you face the errors you solve the errors and that's how you, as a developer we always uh, exceed and that's where the experience comes okay so it's good to get the errors cool we are able to get the data it means that we are able to read the data from the s3 okay so if you just want to see this is the data which we have just pushed so let me take the first file data same data we are able to view it okay but we are not viewing from the local file system we are able to view it from the s3 bucket okay cool so if that is done now let's try to write the code as i was writing the code earlier okay so let's try to achieve that let me copy okay so let's try to write the try catch block and here i will be handing some exceptions if i get some exceptions okay so let me copy this code and let me write under this and let me just paste this cool so it is telling some error and what is that some method over multiple markers not an issue so i think some arguments means it just empty hence it is throwing an error we will we'll try to mitigate that okay we are able to read this as an rdd okay if we are able to read as an rdd but we, what we need to do is we need to remove that delimiters okay if you see this file so not delimiters if you see there are some spaces o in between this okay if you see there is some spaces in this file i just need to eradicate that okay and i need to read that as a complete rdd that's what we are trying to do okay so what is rdd sir huh what is rdd ideally <laughs> rdd is nothing but your resilient distributed data set okay so it's like a low level api again like it's like a big concept what is rdd what is data frame okay so just to give an uh, heads up to that like it's just a resilient distributed data set okay whatever we are trying to read that it comes in the chunks of partition so as of now just a basic uh, layman language just understand that okay <clears throat> okay so we are able to read that now once we are able to read it as an rdd okay so what we need to do is we need to remove something okay what what we need to remove is we need to remove some if you just go to the files let's go this is my file okay if you see there are some spaces in between okay so i just need to remove that okay so what is the count etc etc i just need to remove that so let me okay so i just count out that let me write a small function okay with the help of that i can achieve it very easily that is nothing but a higher order function which is nothing but your map okay so let me write that okay l of and here i am trying to make use of my lambda expression so i am trying to use a concept called substring okay so in this substring what i would be doing is i would be just traversing from my let me just see what are the 0 1 2 3 4 okay so here i'm just traversing we all know what is a substring function i'm not going into much depth of explanation of coding don't worry like what is the code etc etc so it's just simple code once we get to know like once we are in some training environment hopefully if that interest you so at that time it will be like a deep explanation at that time of time as of now it's just an overview what we are trying to achieve over here okay so here i am trying to traverse through each element okay and there i am trying to apply a some trim function okay that's what i am trying to do over here nothing else okay so i'm just trying to traverse for the first element and that is done once that is done i think it what the let's see if it is need to not found value map okay that's not an issue the reason being is i have not been continuated cool so after this is my first and let me just see my second one okay so let me go to the file okay 
Okay, so here what I am trying to do is again I am writing a small substring function as vstring. Okay, and here I am just trying to traverse from the fifth position to the eighth position, eighteenth position. Sorry, and let's trim it. Okay, done. So let's see what is the error it is giving us. Too many arguments. Okay, why too many arguments? <coughs> so l of substring. Okay, so that is fine then we are taking the first 0 to 5 and trim it and uh, that is also good l dot substring 5 of 18 dot trim that looks good let's see and let me just write a small map function and map it to each class that should convey my everything hopefully let me write the code and let's see after that sometimes what happens is even you writing the code sometimes it gives you an error so let me just write the complete and here in this year i'm just type casting my individual element that is nothing but your e1 to i'm not getting to int to int or oh, let go for two string not an issue okay and the second is nothing but your e2 okay so still we are in the fix okay so let me just see what is the issue why i am getting this Okay, so I'm getting, a, I'm trying to write a map function. So whatever the files we are trying to receive in this, so it will be each line. So I'm giving an alias to that L. Okay, cool. So if that is that, I need to lose this over here. Okay, yeah, that is gone. So L of substring for the first. And ideally, this should have been like integer. Cool. Okay. So small changes here and there and my final output should be ready so which is nothing but your resultant as an rdd so we'll try to see that and if some errors are coming we'll try to see those errors what are those so i'm trying to handle some exceptions small exceptions nothing else so i'm just trying to write one small exception if my file is not available i should get some exception okay this is the way you will try to handle a lot of exceptions if you if they are coming in your program okay so file not found exception cool let's take that and let's write a small println statement with the help of string interpolation and that is nothing but a message that is file not available okay so i've just written a small exception and it is just telling that yeah i this is telling by because we have not imported one package Okay, we just need to import one package and that is nothing but import Java input output and the exception which I have just copied. Okay, so that's it. The programs looks good. Okay, so let me just format the code and let me save the code. Good. So done. So the first thing is done. Okay, so we are able, we were able to read the RDD. Okay, so I have just written a small code. So I'm just trying to trim first. I'm trying to go from a particular location to location. I'm just trying to go till here. This is my first column and this is my second column. If any of the spaces are coming, I'm trying to trim that spaces. Okay. So these are, this is the logic what I have written over here. Okay. And whatever the columns which are coming, I'm mapping them and I'm ty type casting them. So by default, it is a string. So as my column had an integer, so I'm type casting that. So this is what I have written. So whatever the data is there, that will be getting printed as of now. If I need to first, let's see whether are we able to print it or not appropriately. And like the RDD method, we are able to get that data. If we are able to get the data, so we just need to write that back to the S3. Simple. Okay, cool. If you see, we are able to get the data. Okay, so here I'm just showing you in only two columns but in projects you will have like 160 170 columns okay there you just need to write a small function to achieve that okay you need to write a function and call that function in this map function so that is an example of higher order function so here i'm just keeping it very simple so that for understanding it would be easy okay so the first thing is done which is nothing but i'm able to read the data which was having in a fixed Y, fixed width file, and I'm able to convert into an RDD and I'm able to see that data, okay? Now, if you need to write this, okay? If you want to write this to your, let's say if you want to write back to your S3, 
you can do that also okay so you just need to copy that okay and here there are multiple options like save as text file whatever the path which you want to give let's give the same path and let's copy this okay so maybe like i can show you this at a later stage let's first do the data framework also and then in one go we will try to write the rdd output and data frame output okay as of now let's comment it let's wait for the data frame. okay now there is one more file okay which is available over here if you see that is nothing but fixed with two okay so that was taken from my local file system and which has the data something like this same way how i achieved the rdd so I, in data frame i just need to do some small minimal changes okay so here i would be reading this file and file would be read as an rdd and i would be converting that rdd, RDD to a data frame okay that's what i am showing over here both the approaches so that we can play with any approach okay let's try to do the second approach okay let's try to read the second file now okay so let's make use of copy paste because like i have already written the first code let's make use of copy paste okay now here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to read the let's say result as a data frame okay so same method okay so i need just, just need to say it's my second file what i'm trying to do i'm trying to read that as a second file cool hopefully if this is working definitely this will work because we have tested the first one we were able to read the file we were able to convert that and rdd remove the fixed with date fixed with spaces and we were able to write uh, read the data in the console so hopefully this also work let me just write a small map function okay as i told you it's like just a higher order function now here what i would be doing is i would be converting this rdd to a data frame okay so to convert an rdd to data frame okay what i would have done i would have directly written this as spark dot read dot format dot csv and eventually directly it would have converted to a data frame i would have gone in that way also but in my last like two weeks back or three weeks back i have already shown one scenario in that method so i thought of showing in another method way of showing way of writing the code in different ways okay let's try to do that so let's try to convert this rdd okay as of now which is an rdd let's convert to a data frame same way so i will be reading this whatever the file is in my lambda function okay let me try to do that okay so this is the thing okay so what i need to do is i just need to take the file to 0 1 2 3 4 okay okay so i'm just trying to read some uh, spaces count etc etc nothing else okay so no 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 i don't want to use this i want to use substring okay so let's use substring so the first one is nothing but a simple which was like zero to five. Yeah. let's see if if any of means if it is giving an error definitely we'll try to uh, eradicate that okay so whatever the like let me copy paste this and i think how many columns are one two three four that should be sufficient okay so the first is let me count it down So the second is which is starting from fifth position to my 14th position okay so the third is nothing but my 14th to 21 okay so this last is nothing but my <coughs> 21 to 24 okay sorry 25 it should have been yeah 25 cool so this is a small thing and here i'm getting an error because there is a extra so the same concept what i am trying to do is i am trying to read the second file as an rdd okay after reading that i'm just trying to trim the spaces okay now here if it is trimmed what i need to do so th the same thing which i have done in the rdd method but here what i need to do is i need to convert this into a data frame okay that's what an extra thing which i need to do hello yeah. if you don't mind could you please use uh, 
make function for this at least so we can understand uh, if you have a more than 100 param- 100, 100 columns right so we, yeah if you don't mind please no 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 issues so maybe like uh, means on wednesday i am having that concept so i'll show you how to create okay. a function and call mm-hmm. what i would be doing is i would be creating one more object okay let me just mm-hmm. pause for some time to explain this less so i'm just going i see i'm not keeping it so complex so that people who are new or maybe like i don't want to like it just like a simple thing yes we are able to understand what we are trying to write so i'm just trying to make them feel comfortable okay we are at we can do this so that's what i'm trying to make right okay what happened now okay so here i'm just trying to trim the spaces so people coming from sql background they would be like easily relating this okay so nothing else okay cool now what i'm trying to do is once we are done with this okay so i need to i think i need to close this so this is close this is close okay that is fine and uh, there should be one more to close this no no that is fine i think we are good with this so this is getting closed and this is getting closed okay both the things are looking good to me so that is done now what i'll try to do is <coughs> i'll try to apply one more map function just to uh, right before that what i will try to do is i'll try to create a case class okay so case class is nothing but when you are converting your rdds to a data frame okay we are trying to create a schema or trying to create a schema and trying to map that columns to that schema so that we can read that columns individually and perform whatever the transformations which we can do okay so just a small heads up it's not a big thing okay so let me write that a case class a simple case class okay so i'm just writing a case class and let's name this case class as let's say uh, this file is let's say fixed with okay so fix class okay and the column names with their respective data types four columns are there and let's say i can give any column names okay so let's give id name designation and some okay so let's try to give some column names uh, first is nothing but your id okay type is of integer the second is name the type is of i should have given this capital integer this is nothing but a string and the third designation okay and let's give the type as string and the fourth is nothing but you can take that fourth parameter as like a, let's say blood level from my group so that is also so, and that is of type double okay so and it is giving an error so i think int should be correct that is correct i am missing something you have small no 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 i just missed my semicolon i make lot of typo errors so that is my common issue no issues so what i have done is i have created a case class okay so this is required to convert your rdds to data frame that's what i am trying to do in this step in the if you see in the first scenario we have just plainly achieved in an rdd method okay but here we are trying to convert that rdd to a data frame and see how we can do that okay so the same concept which we have used earlier so i am trying to make use of that only so let me just do or let me write it okay so maybe like from tomorrow onwards i'll use either uh, zoom or go to meeting so let me create a case class okay so what are four columns there are four columns nothing but e1 okay the e2 the third is nothing but your e3 and the fourth is nothing but your e4 okay so there are four columns okay and these four columns needs to get mapped okay because there will be individual columns so i'll be mapping it so e1 the first is nothing but your two int yeah so the first is to int the second is e2 and by default it is a string so i don't need to map that okay e2 e3 i don't need to map that e2 e3 and the e4 so there's a typo error and the last is nothing but e4 okay so as you have seen in a earlier stage i have just converted means i have taken a data type as two double so let's take as two double okay so and why it is not giving me a prompt so even is of two int that is fine do i need to yeah got it so this should be closed and i need to call that class over here okay so this is the case class okay so what i have created i need to call it over here so because i need to map that column so that's what i'm trying to do okay over here so first one is nothing but your even that is two int okay so the second column is e2 the third column is e3 And the fourth column is nothing but your e two double okay 
and I just need to close this. Okay, cool. All the things are being sorted. So let me just format the code. And uh, as of now, I can keep. Uh, you can you can give any of your exception. Let me give a default exception of unknown. Okay, if any exception which is occurring, which I am not able to encounter, that I can give a default unknown exception as well. So which which I can encounter that. Okay. So let not sure why error is coming. Please troubleshoot. Okay. So let me format the code and let me save this. Okay. Hopefully earlier we have tested the initial code that was working fine and even this should work. So let me just print this data frame so that we should be able to do, do we should be able to and is it converted to a data frame? Okay, so there is an issue. If you see, like, uh, if when I'm trying to hover over it, it is giving me a class. Okay, I have not converted to a data frame. Let me convert that to a data frame, which is nothing but 2DF. Now, if I try to see, yeah, now it is giving me a data frame. Cool. So show and let's not truncate anything. Let me just form. What is this? Let me just format the code. Save this. Cool. Both the things are being achieved. Hopefully the program is ready and let's let it let, let the workspace get built if the workspace is getting built and once the workspace is built so we'll try to execute this let's execute this run as Scala application and let's see the outcome in the console and once the outcome is in console we'll try to write the data back to S3 okay so this is the RDD data that is fine and we are able to see the data frame data also okay so it means the code which small code it's not a big code whatever the code we are written i can just make a small println statement okay and let's say this is rdd output and let me copy this this is nothing but your data frame output okay so we are able to see the output now once we are able to see the output I need to write this data back so this piece of coding we are done okay so reading your files from S3 into Eclipse and start coding okay so we have completed this as, as I said it was four step one step got increased right back right back <coughs> to S3 okay right back transformed output to S3 that's what we are trying to do over here earlier I stopped it so we'll try to show on the console as well as we'll try to write in the S3 as a bucket or maybe as a folder. Okay, so let's say this is the nothing but my RDD output. Okay, so this is first and uh, where is my data frame? Yeah, here I have my data frame. So let me just write this data frame. Okay, so dot write. Okay. So let's say the mode is as of now, let's go for the append mode. Okay. There is a typo error. That is fine. Which format I need to go. Let's go for CSV. You can go for any format depending on your requirement, parquet, etc, etc. But I'm just going in a normal uh, plain format. Okay. So which path you need to save? I need to save in this path. Let's copy this. And uh, let's write this over here. Okay, I think again. So I'm writing to write over here. In place of here, I just need to say this is my data frame output. Okay, so one more typo. Let me eradicate that. So hopefully the final code which is required, like that has been constructed, which is nothing but your end-to-end -end code. Okay, let me save this and let me just... So the final code is ready. Okay, so we started right from the beginning and hopefully everything is good. Okay, now the expectation is we should see the output in the console and as well we should see the output in my the folder should be created and respectively the data inside that in a .csv format should be available. Okay, so that is the expectation. So the code is getting executed. Let it get executed. So we are first seeing the RDD output, yes, we got the RDD output. <laughs> then we, we should be able to see the data frame output. Yeah, we are able to see the data frame output and it is getting executed. Hopefully it is writing and write is done. Okay, write is completed. Either you can see 
through your you can just use your aws s3 command ls to list your bucket you can make use of your cli if you want to make use of cli okay if you see there is some predefined so data, rdd output data frame if you want to traverse okay if you want to traverse through a graphical user interface you can traverse through a graphical inter user face also let me refresh that so if you see we are able to get some outputs so let's go back and go to the s3 if you see this is the rdd output which we have seen okay so there are a couple of part files which have been created okay so that is fine okay so we need to download this rdd data set okay so what we can do is just to verify whether the output and hopefully it should be appropriate let me just download that or what i can show you is i can just show you through query also okay let me show run this query and we can see the data of my first file at the bottom also can you see the data in this first part file i'm having that much data so i am able to see that data okay also we can see the data frame output as well let me go to my bucket under that folder and let's go for my data frame and let's query that and there are multi as i told you in the beginning there are multiple ways to upload the data into your s3 bucket same way i can do in a multiple ways either i can download the data query with s3 select or i can mount a i can use a serverless athena and point to this s3 and fire my sql queries in my serverless athena as well can you see the same data set like here you will not be able to see properly because like it's just like a, a output that is not formatted okay so fully yeah here we are able to see the formatted output if you want to download the output and verify you can do that as well you need just need to go over here okay and uh, are there any object yeah so let's download this it gets downloaded and just open it so we should be able to see again we don't have a header so if you want to add a header to it we just need to add one argument okay and that argument is nothing but your in the key value pair key value pair we just need to write dot option and the delimiter sorry uh, sorry the header and we just need to specify the respective headers okay so but i just let's say this was just like a plain basic uh it's not so complex but yes a little which was available in my project that was complex but i've just taken that example and i have created a small scenario wherein how can we handle the fixed width data if we are getting that fixed width data from the source okay so what were the steps involved to achieve this what we did we spin up the ec2 instance okay so if you go to your let's do a quick recap we just spinned up the ec2 instance okay so we connected through the ec uh, we is connected through a putty through to this ec2 instance that was the first step which we did then we push the local files so with the help of winscp we just move the data so that data was available in your ec2 instance at home path okay at this path then what we did is we create the third step was we create we created a bucket and push this data to your s3 object okay so here it was like s3 we created a bucket for demo fixed width and under that these were the two files we copied through a cli manner the fourth step was we started coding okay so a small piece of code we have written over here we got that we verified that whether it's working or not and after that we have seen both the approaches how to convert that in two ways that is rdd and data frame and finally we have written the data back to the s3 okay so this was a small piece of demonstration for the day one like uh, how we can in, uh, interact with your aws service that is s3 and do the coding and etc etc okay so like i'll just stop the session